And we also have a set of four programs that will enhance this exhibit. They're on the program that you have on your chair so that you can notice when these programs are going to be. Um, they will be live on Zoom if you would like to tune in that way. They will be recorded and then posted on the website. These programs and the links are on the postcard and on your program today and posted on the Friends website. So let me remind you that we're open on Mondays and Fridays, 10 to 2, if you'd like a quiet time to visit. And then we're open on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, 1 to 4, with docents. We'd love to have you join us as a docent or as a member. Today we're fortunate to have an eloquent spokesman to relate some more about quilts and quilting. Susie Brock Black has, as well as being a civic leader, is also a talented artist and quilter. So please join me in welcoming Susie to the podium. Good morning, Burr. <laughs> Quilters showing up in times of trouble comes as no surprise to people familiar with the quilting community. Quilt guilds and sewing groups always have a charity emergency response committee in their organization and they respond both to everyday life assistance in nursing homes, hospitals, and children's advocacy gr groups. And in emergency situations such as fires, hurricanes, and this time in the COVID-19 pandemic. Early in 2019, when the medical community had a shortage of masks and it was recommended the general public wear them too, quilters took up the challenge. Sewists and quilters stepped up and made masks for America much the same as a previous generation manufactured ammunition and tended victory gardens during World War II. Some who lost their job during this time supplemented their income by selling masks on Etsy. In fact, as of October 2020, Etsy reported face mask sales were 11% of their total gross merchandise sales. In our recent history, we have had several pandemics. The Spanish flu of 1918 to 1920 took the lives of 675,000 in the United States. The Asian flu pandemic of 1957-58, the U.S. lost 116,000 lives. The Hong Kong flu, 1968 to 1970, took the lives of 33,800 in the U.S. The AIDS epidemic, or HIV, was recognized in the 1980s through the 1990s and now somewhat under control still contributes to countless lives lost. Which brings us to our current crisis, COVID-19, in which we are still losing people daily. And so as a response to this pandemic, and as a tribute to seasoned and beginning sewists and quilters who have once again responded to the call of a hurting nation, the Peacemakers by the Bay Quilt Guild and the Aransas County History Center welcome you to our quilt exhibit, Quilting in a Pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. And we um, want to call your attention to our exhibit in the yard out here. Um, we have an interpretive sign that tells you about the Shell Creek wall that you'll see back there. In the center, you'll also see the um, rocky ledge that is the reason Rockport is named Rockport. That's a piece of the ledge that was actually dredged recently as they were working on a the South Harbor. Um, and so we hope you'll notice those. And then we recently have um, a, a bridge, a replica bridge <laughs> or pier uh, that came from the remnants of the Copano Bay uh, Pier that's being torn down. The posters in front of Maureen tell you about that bridge because it was a causeway that was put up in the 1930s 
And uh, of course, this is the third bridge that we have across Copano Bay that's out there now. But you can see remnants of uh, the earlier Causeway Bridge that was really known most recently as a fishing pier. So thank you. I hope you'll have some coffee and donuts. Um, and uh, come on into the house. Be mindful of uh, how many people are in here. We uh, like to have not more than six or eight people. So if you'll sort of take your turns coming and going through the house uh, to see the exhibit this morning and then come back when you have an opportunity. Thank you again for being here today. We're delighted to be partnering with the Peacemakers.